Hi guys and girls, welcome to Zillow Cabs. Um, what what we're doing in this video is it's it's not really a tutorial. It's kind of a, a more of a like an investigation, I guess. Investigation, yeah, kind of inv info video on something we get asked quite a lot from some really class players, and it's the question is always put to us, almost like they're embarrassed to yeah, ask right. us, like it's a an obvious question or it's a silly question but it's really not and that is how does the grill cloth change the sound of the cap so grill cloths are usually chosen and um, rightly so i guess on, on the way they look it's a, it's a big part of the way the, the front of the cab looks but you're effectively putting um like a barrier between your ear and the speaker so it's going to be important to understand how that's going to affect the sound of the speaker. So we've had a um, a good idea of really what the what the grill cloths do, but it's not actually anything we've we've ever really sort of sat down. Yeah, and... sat down and thoroughly investigated, see what frequencies are changing, yeah. all that kind of stuff. The rule of thumb is that heavier weight grill cloths kind of kill the top end a, a little bit or attenuate it a little bit. It's mm. kind of what you'd expect. Um, and there's certain grill cloths on the market that, um, like the Fender style ones, which are supposed to be acoustically transparent. I should particularly think they are, but mm. you know they're, they're supposed to be. It's a slightly thinner material, so um, it kind of goes um, goes to show. So we picked a range of six grill cloths, um, really popular grill cloths from our range. Um, we this? started at the thinner end, yeah. so the acoustic transparent stuff, like the, the Fender style stuff, and the Vox. Um, we recorded so it without the grill as well. Just yeah, to... we recorded it without the grill as well, just for a fair test. But we went up from the thinner cloths up to the thicker cloths, like yeah. the salt and pepper, and finally the basket weave, uh, which is quite a, a dense material. Really. Um, we had loads of fun doing this, and we were actually relatively surprised at the at the results. Mm, yeah, I think I'd so. Say. So the method by which we did this was uh, I recorded a little loop on the guitar, um, three loops I think, on, onto the computer. And fed that back into the amp so that the um, so that the mic is capturing the same performance each time. And the the idea of that is so that rather than listen to one grill cloth or like uh, we've done in the past mm. one speaker for like twenty seconds, because these are kind of marginal results that we expected to hear, we thought we'd chop in sort yeah. of like I don't know what it is five or six seconds so you can chop between them and kind yeah. of hear clearer. Uh, what's going on so after each guitar recording i shot an impulse response of the setup um so from that data then we can show a graph of the frequency response um that we're getting from each grill cloth yeah so you essentially see a plot of how the uh, the frequency when you've sent the the signal through you mm. can see what's happening at certain frequencies but you've got to remember this is a uh, a frequency frequency response of this actual setup so it takes into account the microphone yeah. the amplifier the speaker the cab and the grill cloth but as as everything is constant it's just the uh, the changes you'll see in the graph are going to be just of the grill cloth because yeah. we've kept the mic in exactly the same place um, we're very careful we made a jig for the position of the mic and the cab and um, you'll see a little video now of, the, of us changing the, the grill cloth round so it all went back into the same place each time. And we designed the cab specifically so that it is easy to take the grill cloth in and out. It was quite a, yeah. a, a, a quite an, an easy fix, but it was still fitted in there so that there's no unwanted vibrations or anything like that. The audio recordings are using uh, a Bayer M160 ribbon mic and a Shure SM57 dynamic mic. But the impulse responses were shot with the SM57 because it's it just uh, extends a little bit more into the high end, which was which was where we were expecting to see most of the difference to be. I think. And so. I think it's also a mic that um, kind of everyone who's recording has, yeah. so it's it's kind of familiar to everyone.
So hopefully now you, you've listened to the, the different grill cloths and you can hear the subtle differences. Um, and you can also see on, on the plot, you can see um, there are s slight changes yeah. in, in the, the responses. Um, I don't think, to be honest, you could you take a massive amount away from the, from the graphs. We, we ended up just putting them in just so you can see there is a change. It's like when you're buying a speaker, isn't it? You don't look at a graph of the response no, and think, no. oh, that's the speaker I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, the, with these things, you, you really want to hear, uh, hear what's going on. Earlier when I said that there, um, we were surprised by the results, I think it was more, for me, I was actually surprised at how subtle the differences yeah, were. Right. Um, it's we never really sit down and do a a b testing with grill cloths it's um i think it's kind of confirmed that the thicker cloths are having an effect on the top end yeah. it seems to be on the kind of 2k plus but if anything that how small the differences are is a good thing for someone who's trying to pick a grill cloth yeah it yeah. kind of is so yeah. i think it's relatively safe to say you can pretty much pick what you want on looks mm. which is kind of cool because yeah. um yeah, it, it means there's no no holdbacks. So I, I, honestly, I thought the results would be a bit more... I think we used quite possible. a thick uh, sort of martial rock tone here. I don't know if maybe if we used something more fendery, ice picky maybe. I don't know if that would have made more of a difference, but maybe we can have a look yeah. at that in the future somehow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I hope you've uh, learned something from this. I, I feel I have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, and also I think the biggest thing to actually take away from this is there aren't really any silly questions. We yeah. we have been asked that so many times from uh, professional guitar players, um, just awesome guitar players who know their gear, who mm. just know like every guitar and an amp inside out from an editor of one of the biggest magazines in right. the world. <laughs> Uh, and they've all said the same thing. I know this this is probably a silly question, but no, it's not a silly question. So um, we always say, if there's anything you want to uh, want to see or hear or anything, put it down in the comments below. But I think this is a really good time. If you've got any silly questions, <laughs> ask them now. Absolutely. <laughs>